This is chapter 30, abdominal and genitourinary injuries. So we'll just go back over, of course, the abdomen itself. So it's a major body cavity. It extends from the diaphragm all the way down to the pelvis and has several different systems that are uh, intertwined. It's definitely important for you as an EMT to know the anatomy of both the abdominal and the pelvic cavities so that you can truly assess each injury for seriousness. Um, significant trauma can come from both sources of trauma, blunt and penetrating uh, individually or both. 10% um, of all trauma patients have some sort of genitourinary tract injury. Abdomen is overall divided into four different quadrants, excuse me. The quadrant location of bruising and or pain can help you figure out which organ is actually involved. Um, your organs generally found in the upper right quadrant or your liver, gallbladder, duodenum of the intestine, and then there's a little bit of the pancreas there. Left upper quadrant is mostly your stomach and your spleen. Left lower quadrant is your descending colon and then part of your transverse colon. In the right lower quadrant, you have large and small intestines, you have the ascending colon, you have the other portion of the transverse colon, and then of course the appendix as well. Your right lower quadrant, because of that appendix being in there, is a common source for swelling and inflammation. Um, your appendix has the ability to um, get infected, and if it bursts, you certainly can have septic shock that ensues. There's two different types of organs. You've got your hollow organs and you've got your solid organs. Your hollow organs are going to be your stomach, intestines, ureters, your bladder, and this um, mostly you're going to uh, have digested food, urine, or bile that is going to be um, in there when they rupture for some reason, then all of that stuff ends up getting spilled within the cavity. So you can get an intense inflammatory reaction. You can get um, possible infection. Peritonitis is that type of inflammation. Uh, it's serious. It can definitely become life-threatening. Signs and symptoms include a severe abdominal pain, tenderness, and then you can also have muscular spasm. For this entire area, you get your blood supply from the mesentery, which is that fold of tissue that connects the small intestine to the abdominal wall itself. Um, patients with injuries to the mesentery tend to bleed pretty significantly. Um, you'll end up getting abdominal rigidity and peri-umbilical bruising, so bruising around your belly button. Here's kind of a look at the two different. The left uh, graphic that you see has all of your hollow organs. The right has all of your solid organs. Your solid organs include your liver, your spleen, pancreas, and kidneys. Um, a lot of these are going to perform some sort of chemical work within the body. So either you're going to um, produce enzymes, you're going to clean out the blood, uh, you have ATP production, uh, but because they have a very, very rich blood supply, you can get some pretty severe hemorrhage with them. For injuries, they can be open or closed just like pretty much any other trauma that we've talked about thus far. And it can involve hollow and or solid organs, kind of just depends on what's going on. Your closed abdominal injuries tend to be from blunt trauma that doesn't break the skin. That's why they're closed, obviously. Um, so mechanisms of injury can be like hitting the steering wheel, hitting bicycle handlebars, uh, falls, blast injuries. Um, they are typically going to come from two main types of uh, pressure. So compression, um, like if you're in a, a car crash, this can be because you have a poorly placed lap belt that comes right over top of the abdomen. It's supposed to sit low, kind of coming over top of the um, hips. Um, and it's, you also can have um, like a patient that is run over or rolled over by vehicles or objects. 
and they end up getting squished. I also have deceleration. So if that person's and like in a vehicle, um, they're traveling and it strikes something large and immovable, then they are going to stop very, very, very quickly. Signs and symptoms. Um, your pain can be really, really deceiving here um, because it's often pretty diffuse in nature. Um, there's a lot of pain referral. Your solid organs tend to have pain at the site and then they tend to refer. Um, when we're talking about more of your hollow organs, that tends to be kind of all over. And then when you also have um, a lot of blood in the peritoneal cavity, it tends to irritate kind of everything that's going on. And so um, it's hard to like say, yes, it's definitely from this. When you're trying to determine pain, um, it may be hard to actually get a good assessment of it because your patient is often going to um, guard that area. So stiffening of the abdominal muscles. If you have really strong, tight abdominal muscles, it's really going to be a huge pain to try and figure out what's going on. And of course, once you go to touch the abdomen, patients are going to tighten up even more. And so now all of a sudden you're feeling muscle rather than being able to feel the underlying organs, unfortunately. Um, you may end up getting some distension. So instead of hardening, now all of a sudden you've got a big bloated belly and all you can feel is the fluid underneath. You're not going to get a good feel of those actual um, organs themselves. And then your bruising or discoloration that can occur within your abdomen, it's got quite a few layers of tissue to get through before you can actually see it adequately. So it may come off as um, more so just abrasions or scratches, and you're not going to see that massive bruising until quite a bit later. And so it's just very deceiving. Injuries from seatbelts. Seatbelts um, do prevent injuries. They obviously do save lives, but a lot of that is if they're worn properly. When they're worn properly, they are down low over the uh, iliac spines of the pelvis, kind of butted up against the hip joints, so that those strong bones end up taking the brunt of the um, energy. But if you put it too high, you're going to squeeze abdominal organs or some of those big vessels. Um, it can cause bladder injuries to pregnant patients because they like to adjust for comfort um, because your big old belly makes it very difficult. Um, in current model vehicles, your lap and your chest belts are combined. Um, I think I talked in a previous lecture about the fact that we used to have um, separated belts. You could have had an electronic uh, chest belt and then you actually had to clip the lap belt. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, but you still get those people that like to take that chest belt and put it either underneath their arm or behind their back. And all that does is puts all of the deceleration pressure, for the most part, on that lap belt. So if it's not properly um, placed or sometimes even if it is properly placed, it can still cause some pretty severe injuries there to the abdomen. So here's showing... Um, incorrect position that top one is showing if you were to have that belt too high it's not going to disperse any of the energy to the bones it's going to put the brunt of that on those abdominal organs uh, the bottom yeah you're still over some organs but for the most part that energy is going to be dispersed through the bone Open abdominal injuries, now all of a sudden we've got some sort of foreign object that's entering the abdomen and open up, opening up the cavity. So these are your penetrating injuries. Um, stab wounds, gunshot wounds are kind of your examples there. 
open wounds can be very, very deceiving um, because oftentimes that tissue is going to fill in the hole. And so you can't really see how far the object has gone in. You can't see a lot of the bleeding because your fat and your other tissue is going to plug the hole. So you're not going to see that external bleeding. Um, things tend to move around and shift a lot in the abdominal cavity. So trying to say, yes, this for 100% sure is injured is going to be very, very, very difficult. Um, so we're just going to have to maintain a high index of suspicion for any unseen injuries, internal damage to your organs, and then anything that could be potentially life-threatening. Oftentimes, the severity is going to depend on the velocity of the uh, object that actually goes in. So low velocity, these are going to be your handheld objects, um, your knives, edged weapons, not moving super fast. Your medium velocity are going to be your smaller caliber, caliber handguns and shotguns. Um, and then you've got high velocity. So these are high powered rifles, higher powered handguns. When we're talking about high and medium velocity injuries, um, you end up with that temporary wound channel. In addition to your entrance and exit wounds, you end up getting this because of cavitation. So as a cavity is going to form when the pressure wave just in front of the projectile ends up transferring to the tissues, you end up causing microscopic tears to blood vessels and nerves. Um, it can produce a large amount of bleeding. Uh, in general, the higher the velocity of the projectile, the larger the cavity it produces. Your low velocity penetrations um, also definitely have the ability to damage underlying organs and your injuries may not be very apparent during your physical exam because your bleeding may hide the fact that the object went pretty far or deep into the peritoneal cavity or like the exact opposite, like I was talking about, that fat may end up filling in the hole. And so it may look like it didn't go very far in. You may have all of that bleeding trapped internally, so you don't really see any of it externally. So you just, these are the ones that we actually have to pay more attention to. The high and medium velocity injuries are going to show themselves for the most part. It's the low velocity ones that are gonna be rough um, trying to determine. And anytime the patient has an injury at or below the xiphoid process, that's at the point of your um, rib cage in the front, the very, very bottom portion of your sternum. Anytime that you have an injury at or below that, you should just assume that you've gone into the peritoneal cavity. An evisceration is when you actually have your bowel protruding from your peritoneum. Um, it can be extremely painful, but the big thing is that it's like very, oh my gosh, it's very visually shocking. We're not going to push down on the abdomen at all because we don't want to force more of that bowel to come out. We're pretty much only performing a visual assessment. We're not going to really put hands on. The less that you touch it, the better. Um, you want to cut the clothing that is close to the wound to give it some area to try and prevent things coming in contact with it. Um, if there is clothing that's stuck to or that's stuck in the wound itself, we'll leave it there. We don't want to pull on it. Signs and symptoms of open abdominal injuries. Um, oftentimes, obviously, they're going to complain of pain. I think that's pretty obvious there. Um, tachycardia, because you're trying to compensate for that blood loss uh, within the abdomen. You may have signs of shock uh, later, such as the decreased blood pressure, the pale, cool, clammy sing, but it's going to take a little bit of time for that to happen. Um, 